Okay, so welcome to my little course. I'm, I'm going to be calling it um, RSI Ready. So it's for anyone who wants to know how to RSI, but also how to prep for RSI. So if you're a paramedic and you can't RSI, but you know that the patient who you're with needs to be RSI or someone's going to come to you and RSI, that's exactly what this is going to be about today. So if this is something that you are quite interested in and you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe and hit the um, bell notification because if you don't, then you may not be notified when I actually release a video. So you may not know that this content's been released. So we're going to go through a really important acronym, which is called SOAP-ME. Um, it's a really um, helpful little uh, piece of equipment, but I'm going to keep this conversation today to what kind of equipment I kind of expect you to have as a paramedic who can't RSI. So the first S is suction. So they don't just mean um, one suction, they mean two suctions. So why do they want two suctions? Well, do you know what happens when one of these gets full? It stops working, um, and then you don't have suction. So it's really important to not just have one, but have two functioning suctions, and that suction catheter is working and under the right shoulder. Why the right shoulder? Because that's the hand that uses the suction. So that's then S, then go to O, that's oxygen. So as you can see here, we have this patient pretty prepped. So what is here is a nasal cannula. So we have no DSAT, pretty sure I've made a video on that, I'll link it at the top. We have a nasal cannula, so a, sorry, a ETCO2 nasal cannula, which is there, so we can track our nasal ETCO2, but also a normal nasal cannula. Why? Because the ETCO2 um, nasal cannula can't actually put 15 liters through like a normal nasal cannula. If you look closely, there's funny holes in the ETCO2 nasal cannula that doesn't push the air away or push the air, push the oxygen where it needs to go, sorry. Then you get two kinds of patients. So you have a patient who is breathing and needs to be rsi This patient just gets a, so that is a non-rebreather mask at 15 liters per minute and a nasal cannula at 15 liters per minute. This is your, your no DSAT. If they are not breathing, we obviously need to breathe for them which means that we're going to get our OPA. Our equipment um, roll is already fully stocked and packed. We then have our whole system going here. So we have our mask, our catheter mount, our HME filter, and our um, capnography. So this we are then going to, someone's gonna hold two hands on this, and someone else is then going to ventilate. And therefore we are now breathing for the patient. So either they are breathing by themselves and we just have a nasal cannula, um, and a 50% or a non rebreather mask at 50 meters per minute, or if they're not breathing, we're gonna be doing our BVM. But let's just take this patient is breathing, in which case we're just going to leave our non rebreather at 50 meters. So that's suction, oxygen, so airway. What airway stuff, so we, so we have our whole airway roll rolled out, so we have our backup device in case we aren't able to intubate. I don't expect you to have um, a scalpel and all that stuff to do a surgical area, so you don't really need to consider that. Um, we have our blade, we actually have two blades. Um, that's on your left-hand side of the patient. Why? Uh, because that's the left hand that does it. Then we're going to have a size tube, so the correct size, a size bigger and a size smaller. These are just open because they are for simulation. Um, we're going to have our McGill's and our bougie, which is just all the stuff that's on our equipment roll. So that's our suction, oxygen, airway, and now um, P is for position or preparation. So as you can see, the patient is positioned correctly. So it's a non-trauma patient. We're not worried about C-spine. So we're going to ramp them up like this. So ear above sternal notch, and we're gonna have the face flat with the ceiling. And that's exactly what I've done. So he's in the correct position. He's also gonna make my intubation much easier from this angle. And then what we're going to do is then we're gonna be prepared with our equipment or with all the stuff that we have, but that is also the next M for our monitor. So we have our pads on, we have our ECG on, we have our BP cuff on the opposite hand to the SATS probe, we have bilateral lines, and we have also got our tube tied down underneath the patient's head, so it is there ready when we're good to go. So that is our positioning and our preparation. Now we go to our M for our monitor. What can we do with our monitor? Um, you, you might have seen my, um, my Lifepack 15 video, but I'm just gonna quickly run through the things that you should be doing. So in terms of this, so if we can see our, our, um, our SATS Pro um, Pleth, that is really useful. We need to be able to see our, our, um, our CO2 waveform. 
at the bottom, uh, we can take our, our um, SpO2, make this high sensitivity and make this a much larger average timing, which makes it more accurate. And then going to our blood pressure cuff in intervals of three minutes and hitting start. So now it's going to be running our blood pressure every three minutes, which gives us really good trends. Our um, SATS probe is going to be way more sensitive and then we're going to know what is going to happen. Well, we will have more information from that, which is exactly what we want. Just turn off because it's noisy. And then E for our equipment or um, the other M would then be medication, but we're not really um, going to be prepping any medication because I'm assuming you're not carrying what you need. So what you can prep though is you can prep a syringe with um, 0.5 milligrams of adrenaline in case of anaphylaxis. And you can also prep or get out a um, cardiac arrest adrenaline. So that's your, um, your one in 10,000 cardiac adrenaline in case one patient goes into cardiac arrest or the paramedical doctor is needing a um, push dose presser, in which case they can then use that to dilute or do whatever they need to do. Um, we don't necessarily need to be giving fluids, but just make sure that they are both working. And with regards to then more equipment, you can get your ventilator ready, whatever vent you have, if you have a ventilator. Um, but if you don't have a ventilator, that's also not the end of the world. The, per the person who's coming to help you will. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if there's anything you think maybe could be added to this, I'd love to know. Thanks for your time. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now.